Hi everybody. In this SPSS tutorial, we are going to take a look at using SPSS uh, to run correlational analyses. More specifically, we're going to use SPSS to look at scatter plots and then also use SPSS to actually go ahead and calculate correlation coefficients. Uh, the data set that you're looking at if you, should be familiar to you uh, if you looked at SPSS tutorial number two. It's the exact same data set. Uh, just to review, we're on the data view. We have 43 different participants in this data set. And if we click on the variable view, we can see uh, again that we have eight variables, the participant number, the sex and age of our participants, and then also their scores on these five personality variables, extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, neuroticism, and openness. At the beginning of the second SPSS tutorial, I give a little bit more background on these variables, so if you're interested, uh, feel free to check it out. But here we're going to dive right into the analyses, um, again looking at scatter plots and correlations. Now keep in mind again that correlations, or, or I should say a correlation refers to a statistical relationship between two variables, uh, two quantitative variables. So we can only run correlations on the quantitative variables that we have in our data set. And again, scatter plots are good ways of kind of visualizing the relationship between two variables. So let's say we want to take a look at the relationship between extroversion and agreeableness. Because again, we've got data from 43 different people. Uh, we've got their extroversion scores. We've got their agreeableness scores. Maybe there's a relationship between the two. Before we go ahead and actually calculate that correlation coefficient, it's a good idea to take a look at the scatter plot, get a sense of that relationship. So to do that, we are going to go to graphs. We're going to go to legacy dialogues. Uh, this is where we found histogram, and this is where we found box plot. It's also where we find scatter slash dot. So that is where we're going to go. Uh, we can use what's called just a simple scatter. So we'll, we'll do that. Click define. And then what you need to provide here are the two variables that you want to use uh, for your scatter plot. You need to tell SPSS what to put on the x-axis and what to put on the y-axis. So maybe we'll put extroversion on the X, agreeableness on the Y, and then we can go ahead and click OK, and that will allow us to uh, take a look at that scatter plot. If we do that, it's of course going to pull up our output window because that's where all of the output gets printed. And now we can see a quick scatter plot between our two variables. Extroversion on the X axis, agreeableness on the Y, Every dot is going to represent one person in our data set, the intersection of their scores on extroversion and agreeableness. So by looking at the scatter plot, we get a really good sense of kind of what the data looks like. Is there a relationship between the two variables? And then if there is, is it positive or negative? Keep in mind, a positive correlation is when the variables kind of move in the same direction. So uh, scores that are high on one variable are associated with scores that are high on the other, whereas a negative correlation would be the opposite. Uh, scores that are high on one variable tend to be low on the other. What we see here, I would say, would be not a very clear relationship. In other words, I don't see a clear uh, positive relationship or a clear negative. A positive relationship would be indicated by a general trend for the line or for the dots to kind of slope upward like this, that would suggest that you have high scores going with high, low going with low, whereas negative would tend to trend downward. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of a downward trend, but to my eye, it seems pretty flat. So again, the scatter plot, a good way to get that initial look at the data. One thing I want to point out is that you can actually use SPSS to run a whole bunch of scatter plots at once. So again, you can access all the menus from the output screen. Uh, you don't have to go back to the data set, but you can. Um, in any event, you want to go to graphs, legacy dialogues, and again to scatter. Uh, but this time we'll do what's called a matrix 
scatter. And if we click define, now it's asking for a whole bunch of variables, what it calls your matrix variables. What you can do here is basically just enter in a whole bunch of, again, continuous or uh, quantitative variables, uh, scale variables. That's what you have to use here. You can put them in. So I put all five personality measures in there. And then I'm going to click OK. And now what you get are a whole bunch of little scatter plots. So you can see that we basically got every combination of scatter plot that we can have. Extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, neuroticism, openness. And then here we have openness. Uh, this would be neuroticism. It's, it didn't have room to label it. This would be conscientiousness. This would be agreeableness. This would be extroversion. So it's basically like a grid of every possible scatter plot that we could have. Um, again, kind of a good way to see if there's any clear uh, trends that you can see. For instance, I can see here a pretty clear positive correlation. Like there's pretty clearly a positive trend there going that way, uh, kind of from low to high between openness and extroversion scores, meaning that people who score high on openness also tended to score high on extroversion. Uh, you can also see when there's not really a very clear relationship, like maybe here, uh, between neuroticism and extroversion. That one doesn't seem to me as the clear, to as clearly have a trend. So this is just another way of doing it. The matrix scatter plot, clearly the scatter plots are smaller because it's jamming a whole bunch more in a small space. What's another way to get a quick sense of what your data looks like? So that's what I wanted to say about scatter plots. Um, there are good ways of getting a sense of what the data looks like, but as researchers, we often want to go beyond that, and we want to calculate the actual correlation coefficient. So if you remember from class, this would be the R value. Uh, that's the number that kind of depicts the relationship between the two variables. It can range from a low of negative 1 to a high of positive 1. Uh, the sign would tell you whether you have a positive or negative correlation, and the absolute value would tell you the strength. So as correlations get closer to positive one or closer to negative one, they are stronger. Uh, we just looked at a scatter plot of extroversion and agreeableness, and we basically saw no real relationship there. Let's take a look at what that actual correlation is. To do that, we can go to Analyze, and then we're going to select correlate, and then we're going to select bivariate. And bivariate basically means two variables, a uh, correlation between two variables. If we do that, uh, we get a pretty straightforward box where SPSS is just saying, all right, enter in what variables you want. Uh, we can enter in extroversion. We can enter in agreeableness. The defaults here are pretty useful. Uh, it's going to calculate what's known as a Pearson correlation. That's what we want. That's what the R value is. It's a Pearson correlation. And then it's going to flag significant correlations. So you can take a look at your textbook and the module resources to get an idea of what we mean by statistical significance. But for now, let's just say that when a relationship uh, is statistically significant, it means uh, it's unlikely to be due to chance. It means it's a relationship that we can say is statistically reliable. So if we click OK, we are going to get down here our correlation table. Uh, this is pretty straightforward, but it does take kind of a second to orient yourself to. Uh, what we have here is like basically a grid of numbers here, these four kind of cells with numbers. And we have extroversion and agreeableness forming our rows. We also have extroversion and agreeableness forming our columns. And if you look, even though we have four panels of data here, four cells of data, they're really redundant with each other. Uh, in other words, this cell here is the same as this cell, whereas this cell here is the same as this cell. And that's because each of these boxes is showing us the correlation of the variable that's in the row and the variable that's in the column. 
So when you have, for instance, what you see here, it's the correlation between extroversion and agreeableness. Well, that's the exact same as the correlation between agreeableness and extroversion. Because in correlation, it does not matter uh, which comes first, so to speak. The correlation of A and B is the exact same as the correlation of B and A, which is why you're seeing uh, kind of redundant information there. Within each cell, uh, you see up to three numbers. You see this first number, that is the Pearson correlation. That is the R value. So SPSS does not actually label it R, but it does label it Pearson correlation. So we can see that even though to my eye it looked like there was really no relationship at all, there actually is a slight negative correlation there, uh, negative 0.13. Uh, that's a pretty weak correlation because negative 0.13 is much closer to 0 than it is to negative 1. So, again, consistent with what we saw, we know it's not a very strong correlation. The next number here, the 0.395, that is the significance value, also known as the p-value. You'll see from the module resources that a correlation is significant if that p-value is smaller than 0.05. In other words, we're only going to say we have a statistically reliable or statistically meaningful correlation if that p-value or significance value is smaller than 0.05. 0.395 is obviously not smaller than 0.05. That tells us that the correlation we've observed here is not statistically meaningful. And that's perhaps not surprising because it is such a weak correlation. The last number, n, is simply the number of participants in this analysis. There was 43 participants uh, used to determine this correlation. So that's what we're seeing here. Uh, again, we can kind of look again at the correlation between extroversion and agreeableness. And SPSS is telling us pretty much all we need to know. The R value, whether or not it's significant, and then the number of participants that that correlation was uh, run on. As I said before, this cell would be entirely redundant because it's just showing the correlation of agreeableness and extroversion, which would be the exact same as the correlation between extroversion and agreeableness. One other thing to point out is with these other cells, uh, the Pearson correlation is 1, and there's no significance value listed. That's because if you look at it, this is just showing you the correlation of extroversion to extroversion, which is pretty meaningless. They're the same exact variable, so there's really not even a correlation to speak of. Uh, it's saying it's a 1, which means perfectly correlated, which makes sense. It's the exact same thing. So that is how you read this correlation table. Uh, this is a simple correlation table between two variables. What I want to show you next is to complicate things, you can actually run uh, a correlation on multiple variables at once, more than two, and it's just going to show you this grid with more information. So if we go back to analyze, and we go back to correlate and bivariate, and now we add in conscientiousness, neuroticism, and openness, and then we click OK, we now have a much more uh, detailed uh, correlation table, but really all it is is the same thing with just more cells because now we have more possible correlations. These are still what are known as bivariate correlations. They're still just the correlations between two variables. And what you're seeing here in each of these cells would be the correlation between whatever variable is in that row and whatever variable is in that column. And again, there's a lot of redundancy because the correlation, again, between like extroversion and conscientiousness would be the exact same as the correlation between conscientiousness and extroversion. Again, correlation between A and B, the same as the correlation between B and A. One thing we can see here, now that we have more correlations, is that some of our correlations have little asterisks next to them. That means that we have significant correlations. The, that's a situation where that p-value is smaller than 0.05, it means we have a statistically meaningful correlation. So by using this correlation matrix, we can get a good sense of 
really all the correlations in our data set that we want to examine.